welcome to the Diamond Mower channel. Now this video isn't going to be like my usual ones. It is in fact more of a cheap shot at getting some new subscribers. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quiet video that may be enjoyable to people who enjoy ASMR. I'll get into it as soon as I say thank you to these new patrons. Ozzy Crawford, Chris Lewis, Gin Ichimaru, Arigato Ginzan, Daniel Piotrowski, and Luke. Thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate you becoming patrons. If you'd like to become a patron yourself, there's a link in the description to do so. Just gonna eat some chewing gum while I do this video. So what I'm gonna do is talk about the tools that I use. I'll show you the basic tools I use for making jewelry. And then explain about them. I may even show you how they work. This is the bench peg. It's a securely positioned piece of hard wood and we use it for cutting, filing, jewellery or any piece of metal is held in our hand against this and then we will hold a file let's say lean the jewellery against the bench peg and then use our tool to work on it see it wears down with use. This is more than half worn away. I may change it soon. Next to the working jeweler we have a bench block. It's a solid metal block of steel perfectly flat. This is for tapping metal flat. We will put a piece of metal on it and with our hammer, tap it flat. Also directly in front of me, I have a soldering block. This is charcoal. different. Some are sharp, 
some are more delicate with modified ends for holding stones. Brass do not react in acid. These are strong and short. These are good for holding things when I solder them. These are spring tweezers. These extra large ones are very good for holding rings in position when I'm soldering them. Next to that, I have these sticks covered in different grades of sandpaper. These are used for smoothing metal and preparing it for soldering. They vary from extremely rough to very smooth. This is 1500 grit paper. I also recently bought this aluminium one from a jewellery trade shop in Japan. It's unusual, but I enjoy using it. In this pocket also, I have to hand two mandrels. This one is slightly oval shaped. This one is perfectly round. They're useful for making small collets. As you saw earlier, this pocket has files in it. This one is rough and straight. This one is half round. The curved side is good for filing inside of rings. I have two of these different cuts, one rough, one more fine. This one is extremely coarse. These are essential tools for the jeweler. similar job but I'm even I can get even tighter curves with this 
these are a pair of pliers I modified. The idea is this goes inside a ring and then when I squeeze them together I can push claws down over the top of stones. I've used them a few times, they work very well. On top I have a few more tools. This is an old lighter I restored. It needs refilling. Maybe I'll do that now. So next to my lighter, I have digital calipers. One of the patrons last year kindly bought these for me. Michitoyo brand. They're nicer quality than what I had. Similar to drills, we have burrs 
rather than drilling holes in metal, we can use these to grind away from the side or grind into. So they also come in different shapes. Bud frays. Different sizes. We have cylinder phrases, very useful. Again, all different sizes. Some of these bud phrases are longer. That's called a flame phrase. Very useful. All jewelers use these when you buy them new. They come in a pack like this. This is the brand Bursch. A nice quality. I keep these separate because these are specific for setting stones. Diamond Burr. soldering jewellery. The joins need to be fluxed. This is borax, boracic. Like a pestle and mortar, I grind it up in here, this dish, and mix it with a little water, and then that solution. I will get this brush wet and wipe it on the solder join. Then when it's under heat, it will not oxidize. It's important that the join is clean for the solder to flow. This stuff is a little bit poisonous, so it's important to be careful when soldering, not breathing in the fumes or getting this too much on your skin or especially in your eyes or mouth. Maybe I should just do a solder and show you now. of salt. now melted on the end of this. These two bits of metal 
metal are now soldered together. After things are soldered, if you soak them in acid, strong now. This is how we build pieces of jewellery. So I think I'll end the video there. Thank you very much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you found this video through searching for ASMR videos, thank you very much. Um, it's the only ASMR video I've done, but actually I was one of the first people ever uploading ASMR videos on YouTube. This was back in 2006. Um, there were people uploading videos uh, to do with like eating sound effects, which sometimes I liked, but quite often the picture quality was good, but the sound quality was bad. I had a very good camera, so I thought I will make very good sound quality videos. And I uploaded a video of my girlfriend at the time eating chocolate and <laughs> She had quite big lips and it was a very good video, lots of nice comments, but also there was even more very rude comments about her lips. So I deleted it, but I wish I kept it up because it was literally one of the very first ASMR videos on YouTube. Um, anyway, so <laughs> if you haven't done so already, please click like and subscribe and uh, Check out the other videos on your channel if you're interested in making jewellery. I was a professional jeweller, now I'm a YouTuber, sharing everything I learned over the last 25 years working as a professional jeweller. Cool, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, bye.